If you've been following my channel, you know that I have two main uh, playlists. One is the coming Civil War. The other one is the election of 2020. What I want to try to do in this video is to draw those two themes together in this, what will be for me at least, the final video before uh, the election tomorrow. I'm filming this uh, Monday evening. It's uh, around 530 and it'll probably get posted on Tuesday, Election Day. As I've said in other recent videos, I'm just convinced that uh, Donald Trump's going to win. Uh, four years ago, I came to the conclusion he was going to win a little after Labor Day. Uh, this year, I came to the conclusion he was going to win before Labor Day, 2019, a full year ahead. Last year, going into the election, last four years ago, going into the election, I had real concerns and qualms because of the the polls showing that you know Hillary was destined to win plus 90 percent chance this time the polls aren't getting to me because I don't trust them now I know and you've probably heard this and read this that the pollsters have learned their lessons from 2016 and they made adjustments I live in Florida two years ago we had a governor's race uh, DeSantis and Gillen uh, former mayor of Tallahassee, Ron DeSantis, was a, a former congressman. Uh, Ron DeSantis is our governor today. But if you look at the polls at the time, two years ago, 2018, they had Ron DeSantis winning by 7%. Ron DeSantis won a narrow victory. It was only a half a percent. But that means the polls were off by 7.5%. I mean, that's, that's a huge margin of error. If the polls are off by seven and a half percent this time in Florida, you know, Donald Trump's going to win big in this state. And if they're off nationally by the same amount, he, you know, he's going to win very easily, especially in electoral college. And, and we also had a Senate race that year and the, the Democrat was supposed to take the Senate. It was a Nelson and he was running against, uh, uh, God, I can't remember the name of our senator at this point. Uh, but the Republican won the Senate race, too, and Nelson was defeated. So, you know, if you look at the polls in Florida just two years ago, when they supposedly had learned their lesson from 2016, they hadn't. They were as off in 2018 uh, as they were in 2016, and as I suspect they're going to be off this time, too. And I have more to say about what I think is going on with the polls, but I'm going to save that until, uh, you know, after the election, after we see what happens. In short, I'm convinced the polls are way off, and we're going to find that out tomorrow night, Wednesday morning, something like that. So enough for the election theme. What about the Civil War theme? And that's the problem I'm having, is if we assume that Donald Trump is reelected, how are the Democrats going to react? How is the left going to react? How will progressives react to that. We know what happened in 2016. We know they had a meltdown. We know they declared a resistance. We know that they just, you know, drug their feet, tried to stop legislation from getting through, don't want to give Trump any victories, try to impeach him, investigate constantly. And if, if the Republicans don't retake the House, you know, they can keep doing that. The question is, will they? Now, if you go back to 1972, when George McGovern was you know, massacred by Richard Nixon, uh, despite rumors of Watergate already being around, the Democrats, after that, took a step back, reconsidered their future, made some adjustments to their strategy. Had they gone too far left with McGovern? They believed they had. So what did they try to do? They tried to move back toward the center. And they came up with uh, Jimmy Carter in 1976, who was a viewed as a moderate, a centrist, technocrat, a calm guy, naval officer, Naval Academy grad, nuclear engineer, although he, he, he could never say the word nuclear. Actually, Jimmy Carter is the only president I ever spoke to in my life over the phone. And he... Uh, he he was not, his conversation with me, let's just say, was not anything like what I would have expected 
given his portrayal in the media as the kind of guy he was. He was a nasty SOB to me over the phone. I just started a new job. I didn't really have the information at hand that he wanted. And it was information I, I it was a different agency. I mean, why would I have had it to start with? But he was a really a nasty SOB. And I'll never forget that. So my view of, of Carter is sort of, you know, he's not quite the guy you saw on TV. But but setting that aside, you know, that's who they went with. And they did the same thing. He won. You know, he failed. He didn't get a second term. He, I think, moved too far to the left on some issues. And then he corrected the second the second half of his first term, but it was too late. And he never really managed to come back from that. And then we got Bill Clinton, successful president, two terms for the Democrats. They did really well. And then they gave us Barack Obama, who they portrayed and who tried to style himself as a moderate, you know, in in the mold of, of Clinton. But he really wasn't. He was a progressive. And once he got in there and he started following progressive policies, that's, in my opinion, when the Democrat demise started, 2008, or I guess you could say 2009. They saw him as the, the, the capstone of a progressive movement. You know, they were seizing power. They had the presidency, the Senate, and House. The reality was it was their peak. They were like, you know, Robert E. Lee's army in Pennsylvania, you know, a day before the Battle of Gettysburg began. Looked like things were going well, but it was really, they were at the high point. And I think the Democrats were at the high point in 2009 and 10. And from then it's been all downhill. And if you've watched my videos on Pennsylvania, North Carolina, uh, Florida, you can see that, that that began the erosion of Democrat support in those states. I mean, Pennsylvania in 2008, it had a, Democrats had a 1.2 million voter registration edge over the Republicans. They've lost half that. It's down to 600,000 today. They've lost ground in North Carolina. They've lost ground in Florida. Arizona is a different story. But three of those four states and a lot of eastern states, they, they've been losing. It's not since Donald Trump. This didn't begin. Donald Trump is not the cause of the Democrat problems. He's a symptom of their problems. And their problems are internal. Their problems are their policies. People keep walking away from their party. I'm one of them. I, I left a long time ago. Others are leaving more recently. And now we have this you know, possibility that large numbers of African Americans are walking away from the Democratic Party. You know, at what point are they going to realize that their policies are out of sync with ever more people in this country? And, you know, there's two ways to go about confronting that. And that's what I want to get to next. You know, what are they likely to do if they lose or when they lose on Tuesday? Will the Democrats of today do the same thing they did in 1972? Reassess the situation, change course. One would think they would. I don't think that they will. I think they are too far gone. I think the party is too far off to the left. I think the media is in the same situation. I think the elites in this country have moved too far to the left. If you look at, you know, I just retired from a university. I know what's going on there. I've been involved in university life for uh, over 50 years. And I've seen the constant drift left. And I think they're too far to the left to adjust and to start tacking back toward the center. I I don't think it's conceivable. I just don't think they can do it. I don't think that they will do it. So then the question is, if they don't want to keep losing and losing bigger and bigger every time, again, if you look since 2008, you can see their margins of victory got smaller in 2012. They actually lost the margin in 2016. And if they lose again, what do they do? And I think, you know, what we may see is just a continuation of what they did after 2016. Denial. You know, they'll blame dirty tricks. They'll blame voter suppression. I already see uh, Clyburn from South Carolina is already, I saw him, he was on Fox last evening. And uh, he said, well, it's, it's a close race, but, you know, the only way Joe Biden loses if there's, if there's voter suppression. So I guess that's going to be the narrative. If Joe Biden loses, it's voter suppression. And then you have uh, Maxine uh, Waters from California blaming black men. We're going to blame black men. 
They're the ones who stab their mothers and their grandmothers in the back. It's the black men. You know, this is going to be the, I guess, the, the different narratives of, of why they lost this time. Not because they ran, you know, a, a crappy candidate. Not because they had a bad VP pick. Not because he didn't campaign, uh, Biden didn't campaign very well and hard. Not because they didn't go door to door because of COVID until it was too late. Not because they told people to vote by mail. And then it turns out now they want them to vote and they try to convince them, well, you don't really need to be afraid of COVID-19. Well, we were exaggerating before. It's safe to go and vote now because they need them to vote because they haven't been voting by mail. They haven't been voting early, especially here in Florida, but numbers are all down. Even in a place like Miami, where they, they need to win big to carry the state. So now they're in a panic. And I think that they're just going to continue to do what they did in 2016. You know, protest. I think we'll see riots in the street. I think they're going to start probably Wednesday night. We'll start seeing things of Trump. Trump wins. Wednesday night, we'll start seeing violence in the streets. Washington, D.C., other cities. I don't know exactly what they've got planned, but we know they've been planning. We know they've been preparing. They were supposed to be doing this in Washington uh, since Labor Day, and they haven't been. Why haven't they been? I think at that point they realized it was counterproductive, so they're putting it off until after the election, and then all hell's going to break loose. I mean, they, they caught a, a shipment of uh, explosives coming into Philadelphia last week. So God knows what's, be, what's being planned out there. I've, I've seen... Uh, uh, hidden camera stuff of people talking about a coup in Washington, if seizing federal buildings. Uh, what do they need to grab? They're, they're building barricades and walls around the White House, like they're building a bunker. I mean, people are boarding up their businesses. Where are they boarding up their businesses? Small towns, rural areas? No, they're boarding them up in the cities. Who runs the cities? The Democrats. So who's going to be rioting? It's, it's not Republicans. It's not, you know, white supremacists who are going to be rioting. They know who's going to be rioting. Democrats in urban areas that they run and they control. So I think that's what we're going to get. And it's going to just deepen this continuation of drift into a deeper civil war. Because after he's reelected and Trump doesn't have to run again, I don't know if they're going to do the same things they've been doing. They, there's a lot, they have a lot more tools. I posted a video a while back on the Insurrection Act. You know, you should be familiar with it. You should read it. I'll put a link to that in the description. Because if you read the language of that, you can see that Trump already has justification, if he wants to use it, for invoking the Insurrection Act, the, whatever the federal statute current number is. Uh, all, all this is sitting there. It's, they're ready to go. We're going to see... Uh, different investigations pushed by the Republicans and the Justice Department coming forward. You know, Hunter Biden, Joe Biden, Biden's brother. We still have the stuff out there from the uh, the Durham report. You know, never saw it before the election. Would it come out after the election? At some point, I would assume. All this is going to be going on. And if the Democrats don't look at the reality and say, you know, our strategy is bad. Our candidate was bad. We made a lot of bad choices and that's what we lose. If they're not willing to do that, which is what they did in, after the 72 loss, if they, they double down on their current policies, we will move more swiftly toward a full scale civil war in this country. And that's not a prediction. It's not something I hope happens. God forbid. I mean, I don't have much longer to live in this world. It's not that big a deal to me, but I have children. I have a grandchild. I don't want to see them living in a country torn apart by civil war. It's the last thing in the world I want. But I can see it coming. You know, the, the last civil war came after an election that was divisive. Abraham Lincoln's election in 1860 wasn't so much a watershed moment. Moment, The Republican Party had popped up earlier in the 1850s and in a matter of about six years had taken the presidency of the Senate and the House. They came out of nowhere. They didn't exist a decade before 1860. And Republicans' tr triumph forced the Democrats in the North and the South, 
to reassess their situation. They could have said, well, you know, maybe we should rethink slavery, or maybe we should embark on a course toward the eventual elimination of slavery, and try to drag it out so it doesn't have as big an impact socially and economically as it might. There are any number of things they could have done with a correct reading of a situation that would have been much more sensible than what they did. What was what they did, of course, was to start leaving the Union, starting with South Carolina in December, and then the other states followed one by one. And then finally, in April, South Carolina bombarded Fort Sumter, which uh, Lincoln had refused to evacuate, and the war was on. And we know what happened. I don't need to replay the Civil War for you. The South lost. Uh, slavery ended. And then you had Reconstruction. And it took a long time for the South to recover. So I'm not convinced that the Democrats won't do the same thing this time. It's not that Democrat states are going to leave the Union. They won't go that far. The, the, the country is not configured the way it was separated you know, geographically between North and South as it is today. It's all mixed up. You know, if you look at an electoral map, you've got these blue blobs surrounded by red. And the blue blobs rarely connect to one another. And, and that's their problem. So they can't just leave. But they can leave in terms of just not listening. And you can see some of that's been going on for a long time. Uh, the, 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 you know, areas where they, they don't follow federal law, they don't want federal support, uh, sanctuary cities, sanctuary counties, sanctuary states like California. They've basically been pulling out of the union little by little now for years. And if they just do it a little more, and at the same time they use violence in the cities, although you know that doesn't really make a lot of sense, the cities are the heart of their political, economic, and social power. They're going to be destroying, it would be like, uh, for, instead of a South Carolinians bombarding Fort Sumter, they turned the cannon inward and they started bombarding Charleston. It doesn't make a lot of sense, but there's a lot of things go on with progressives these days that don't make a lot of sense. I mean, you can say their whole policies, all their policies don't make a lot of sense. So I'm not sure what they're going to do. But my guess is, my gut tells me, and like I get said many times on social media, progressives always double down. You know, it's never the fault of their policies. It's never, it's always because they didn't spend enough money. They didn't push as hard. They didn't fight as hard. I mean, you can see, if you, you, you deal with Marxists and socialists on a, on a college campus, you know, and you say to them, well, you know, it's never worked. You know, socialism's failed everywhere it's been tried. And in the places where it's still functioning, like North Korea, you know, even China is having problems now. I mean, why would you think you can still make it work? But they, they do. I mean, I've had arguments with these people and they still say, well, you know, uh, uh, Stalin did it all wrong. If Stalin had done this, it would have worked, you know, or they always think they can make it work the next time. They just need to use different techniques, more force, less force, something. They always think they can still make it work. It's like, it's like a, a kid I grew up with who had a junker car that never ran, where it would run for a day or two and it would break down again. Like, you know, just get rid of it, get another car. But no, no, it's a great car. You know, I'll get it working. I just, I just need to replace this. And he just kept pouring money into a car uh, that uh, I think it was an MG Midget. It, it never ran. He'd get it running and he'd go out one day, it would break down again, he'd get it towed. And he'd, oh, I'm not going to get rid of the car. You know, I, I just need to do another car. That's like progressives are like today. You know, progressivism is breaking down. We just need a new part. We just need more money. We just need to work harder. We should have done this. We should have done that. And I don't think it matters what they do. Their policies won't work. But they're not going to give up on them. They're going to double down. And God forbid, I think we're going to just go deeper into the civil war that's already begun. It's just going to get more violent and more trying and more, more heart rendering in this country. And that's unfortunately what I think is gonna happen after the election, probably beginning Wednesday. But we shall see. Let me know what you think. Hopefully uh, some of you are more opt optimistic about future events than I am. Uh, at least I pray you are. Uh, let me know in a comment. Like the video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. I think as I'm recording this, I have 99 subscribers. I just need one more subscriber.
and let's get one person watching this who's not already a subscriber to subscribe and make that magic number 100. Please, please help me out. Do it. Do it for Trump. Uh, share the video with your friends. Uh, hit the notification button so you know when I post new videos. And until the next time, you know, stand strong, stand firm, confront the resistance, resist yourself, and keep fighting.